Hello supply chain friends. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video about how AI is transforming the world of supply chain and I gave three specific examples about generative AI being used in DHL, Walmart and C3. In this video, I will talk about another class of AI, which is agentic AI, something which is becoming a buzzword now and there's a lot of singing and dancing around it. But I'm gonna cut the clutter around the noise and we'll give you three specific examples again to show you how agentic AI is helping supply chain professionals in the areas of autonomous robots, workflow automation, and customer care. My name is Jamil Hai, and I've been working in supply chain management positions across South Asia, Middle East, and North America for the last 20 years. And my mission is to help you build real life skills for your job and career that they don't teach you in college. And if you are preparing for a supply chain job interview anytime soon, you should definitely book a session with me because I'm going to take your resume the job description you are applying for and based on a combination of those two and my 20 plus years of experience will give you some laser guided tips and tricks which will maximize your chances of success. So go ahead now and book your session. Now before I get into the examples of agentic AI, I want to remind you again that AI is not a new concept in supply chain. In fact, supply chain is one of the most early industries which adopted and embraced AI. For example, perceptive AI which was probably and arguably the most uh, earliest forms of AI has been used in supply chain since the late 1990s where the optical character recognition technology was being used to extract, for instance, the bill of lading number from a BOL document and then transmit that number across the different systems uh, in the supply chain. So that technology has been in use for a very, very long time. Then we uh, had the physical AI, which is the robots. Uh, and we'll talk more about robots today in today's video because those robots have become more um, intelligent with the agentic AI. But the earlier forms of smart robots or AI enabled robots have been in use in supply chain by companies like Amazon since as early as 2012. Uh, and you must have seen the famous Kiva ro robots if you have ever been to an Amazon warehouse. And then uh, since 2015, generative AI, which is the more commonly known and most, more commonly used version of AI that we are all aware of, like chat GPT and similar tools, uh, they have been also uh, used in supply chain in different areas that you see on the screen. And then uh, since 2020, agentic AI has been tested uh, in different areas. And this is what the focus of this video is. Now, I just want to clarify the differences between these three because it's very easy to confuse yourself between these different types of AI because AI is generally used as an overarching word, but uh, all these different technologies that I talked about have got some differences. And uh, since I posted the last video, I got a lot of questions about is this machine learning, is this AI or not? So let's take a slightly deeper dive into what is perceptive AI, what is uh, generative AI and so on. So if you look at perceptive AI, the core function there is to sense and interpret data from uh, the environment. Inputs to perceptive AI could be sensor data it could, and outputs could be interpretations or classifications. Uh, I talked about uh, the main technology being used by supply chain in this context was uh, the famous OCR or optical character recognition, uh, but there were audio analysis and sensor fusion and so on as, and so forth as well. Um, typical use cases were object detection in a manufacturing facility or speech recognition or optical character recognition that we talked about. Now level of autonomy in case of perceptive AI is reactive because you are providing a stimulus. So in, in the case of the OCR example I gave you, you are providing the document, you are basically just AI is being used to smartly detect from that document which number I should use or which information is relevant and so on and so forth. Then we uh, move to generative AI. Now generative AI uh, creates uh, novel content and it's more like a content creation um, uh, tool that is being used and it's being used, that content is being used in different uh, forms of supply chain applications like we saw in the last video as well. So mostly people know generative AI in the context of chat GPT. So it's nothing more than a smart search, right? So you ask a question, it answers. But if you think about it, when you are driving on the road with Google Maps or any other application that you're using and it will tell you that, oh, there's traffic, there's an alternative route or there is uh, you know, there's a cop over here or you could have a problem on your, on your road. That technology um, has been used a lot uh, by the supply chain companies to optimize their routes. Uh, and in that case as well, because it's generative AI, it's a reactive process. So it will look at some data and it will ask you to respond to uh, 
uh, basically the stimulus you are providing and the data it's analyzing. Um, and in this case in generative AI, because there's a lot of information crunching now, it's no longer about, okay, this is the document and just read it. Now you are looking at, even if I go back to that traffic example, there are lots of different variables, right? So there is traffic and traffic situation changes all the time and there is police. So in this case, the concept of LLMs comes in, which is large language models, because these LLM uh, algorithms are able to crunch uh, lots and lots of data and that is really the true power of AI. Uh, so that's generative AI. Now what really makes agentic AI so much more attractive not only for supply chain but for all the other industries that suddenly from those reactive technologies we are migrating to a more proactive technology. So agentic AI, one of the main differences between agentic AI and the, the others is that it can not only analyze your information and ask you to make decisions based on that data, it can actually make those decisions itself, which can sound a bit scary and therefore there is so much scare around AI nowadays that a lot of jobs will be taken over, which is true. So if you have a job which is highly repetitive, so in the context of supply chain, if you are doing a data entry job or you are doing, uh, let's say, a warehouse picking job, uh, with the agentic AI technology, a lot of those jobs might get replaced depending on how fast this technology evolves and how quickly, and, and, and of course, how economical the adoption becomes in environments in supply chain, for example, in warehouses, right? So uh, definitely, uh, if you're doing a repetitive job, agentic AI is something for you to look at, uh, but don't get scared of this technology, embrace it and try to understand how it works. Because there's a very famous saying that AI is not going to take your job, somebody knowing AI is going to take your job, right? So you have to just get out slowly from those repetitive roles and try to get into roles which will work with AI versus competing with it. So, so with that said now, let's look at some practical examples of how agenting AI is changing the world of supply chain. So the first example is from FedEx and FedEx is using uh, agentic AI in one of their robots called the DoraBot. Now, DoraBot, we'll talk a little bit more about how this DoraBot is uh, more agentic AI enabled than some of the previous robots. But just to give you a few numbers around the DoraBot, it can sort up to a thousand packages per hour uh, and it can manage up to a hundred destinations. So that's already a lot of complexity. So not only a thousand packages per hour, which is a lot of packages per minute, but it can basically sort those thousand packages per hour to up to a hundred destinations, which is not easy. And then it can handle up to 10 kgs per package. So it's not uh, only designed to uh, handle like lightweight parcels, but it can go up to 10 kg, which is about 22 pounds. Now you might argue and say that robots have been used in supply chain for a long time. We already covered that point earlier, right? But so what makes DoraBot agentic AI enabled? So let's look at a few uh, of its characteristics. First of all, it can make autonomous decision making. So it uses AI to autonomously scan barcodes, determine package destinations and sort items without human intervention. So once again, this is a more proactive technology than a reactive technology. So it's not only just churning out information, but it's acting upon that information. The second point is it uses real-time adaptation. Uh, it employs computer vision and deep learning to adapt to varying package sizes, uh, shapes, and fluctuating package flow. So imagine you know you are in a uh, FedEx sorting center. You could have a letter, you could have a box, you could have a rectangular box. So it is intelligent enough to manage those different shapes and sizes uh, of packages as well. It also offers seamless integration, so it integrates drawer-shaped gripper and conveyor systems to autonomously receive packages and deliver them to the correct slots, mirroring human decision-making. So imagine, uh, and Amazon also, by the way, is working on a very similar robot right now. Uh, the name is skipping my mind, but uh, they are also using a smart robot which can almost feel the different types of objects. So it can feel whether something is soft. So if it's pressed really hard, it can break or something is really brittle. So it then adjusts it. So it's almost giving like a near human touch. Uh, which once again requires a lot of complex LLMs and a lot of complex uh, AI code working in the background. And, and finally, this Dora bot is also very intelligent in terms of continuous learning. So like a human being, it can continuously crunch all that information which we are constantly feeding to it and it becomes smarter over time. So algorithms continually fine-tuned by FedEx and Dora bot to improve efficiency and adapt to new scenarios demonstrating goal-directed improvement. So 
definitely looks like a normal robot, but it's a much more intelligent and AI enabled robot. And that is why it falls right in the middle of this agentic AI category. The second example of agentic AI is how it's being used to transform the world of customer service. Now, this is something which probably will resonate with a lot of you because even forget about supply chain, even the last time you may have called your bank or you may have called your utility company, uh, more likely than ever before, there's a chance that before a human being picked up that phone, an AI uh, customer service bot may have taken your call and at least for that initial filtration, it would have asked you some questions and if it could handle all your queries, it would manage the whole call itself. And if at some point in time you said, you know, I want to talk to a human or I, I, I want uh, some very specific help, then it would direct it to the customer care uh, representative. So imagine the number of calls that human beings had to take earlier uh, have been significantly reduced now and the same thing is happening in the world of supply chain so this example is from a company called Fred Amigo uh, they are using AI powered chatbot autonom autonomously to handle customer uh, inquiries shipment tracking and provide instant responses 24 7 the other that's the other benefit right so in the in the older world you would have to hire these customer service agents in different time zones because if you are offering 24 seven support. Now your same chatbot, which could be uh, connected to a server in North America can work 24 seven because that's the beauty of using uh, agentic AI versus a human being, right? Because human beings need rest, this can work uh, con con constantly. Uh, it also does real time adaptation. So adapt, it adapts to uh, responses based on customer needs, shipment status, logistics data, proactively updating customers and so on. Also offers a seamless integration. It integrates uh, with the logistics platforms. It accesses real-time data and coordinates with other digital systems. Uh, and it also continuously learns, which is very similar to the Dora bot we covered earlier. And overall for Freight Amigo, this has helped them reduce uh, their customer service costs by up to 40%, which is pretty substantial. And then finally, I've got an example on how agentic AI is significantly improving workflow automation. And in this case, I'm going to use the example of this company called Logility. So Logility uses uh, an intelligent agent uh, which autonomously automates and optimizes end-to-end -end supply chain workflows. It collects live planning data, analyzes KPIs, uh, evaluate scenarios and provide uh, actionable recommendations. Um, I actually saw some of these examples, not from Logility, but from other uh, vendors uh, at a conference recently and it looks very promising because one of the biggest challenges with supply chain workflows um, based on my experience is that when you have to extract information uh, which is meaningful you have to sometimes go to three or four different systems because let's say your ERP doesn't talk very well to your uh, APS or your APS doesn't talk very well to your WMS or your WMS doesn't talk very well to your TMS so let's say you are trying to extract information about even one SKU, you may have to go up to like four or five systems to find out exactly what's going on. And I think this is where some of this technology can be a true game changer. And that's exactly what Logility is trying to do here. So if you look at um, some of the uh, capabilities here, so it uses a conversational interface. So this is where the, there's a, this is basically a combination of generative AI and uh, agentic AI. So it uses natural language interface, allowing any supply chain stakeholders from executives to planners to ask questions about supply chain operations in plain language and receive instant actionable answers enriched with data visualization and so on. Um, as I mentioned, it uses a combination of generative, uh, generative and agentic AI. So uh, it not only provides answers, but also suggests additional insights, explanations, and recommended actions. Uh, it can weave agentic workflows into uh, the business processes. So it not only provides you that information, but if you uh, give it that autonomy, it can also make decisions. So for instance, I'm just making this up. If you have a very common problem about a certain item or a certain flow, then you can basically program it to do certain actions if those conditions hold true. So it can be really uh, smartly used. Um, data integration, it provides integration across multiple platforms like I mentioned earlier, uh, and it provides uh, uh, actionable insights and workflow automation.
in terms of business results, it's helping improve uh, revenue growth up to 5%. Uh, it dramatically increases access to information and productivity for all the team members. And, and this is very important, guys, because supply chain basically is about the flow of three things. Number one is product flow. Number two is information flow. And number three is cash flow. Everything else is happening around managing these three flows. So if you are able to make those, especially the information flow as seamless as, as possible, and this is that power of agentic AI that we are beginning to see now, uh, this can be a huge time saver, cost saver, uh, and a productivity catalyst uh, for a lot of companies. And this is where uh, this tool is also helping companies improve their uh, decision-making speed um, and Logility has received a 94% willingness to recommend rating in the 2024 Gartner Peer Insights report, uh, which is a great uh, a testimonial to the customer service ability of this uh, this tool, uh, and it's being uh, recognized as an industry leader in this space. So overall, in a nutshell, although there is still a long way to go for some of these agentic AI tools to become Perfect, perfect, but I think that's gonna happen really fast. But we can already see that when it comes to making the autonomous robots more intelligent, workflow automation smarter and faster, um, and less dependent on human error, uh, and then customer service uh, just going to the next level and reducing costs like, like never before. Um, so this is these are some classical examples of agentic AI, and that's already here, and it's helping a lot of supply chains to get smarter and faster. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I've also made videos on topics like how to get your resume past the AI bots, which is a very common use case in the HR industry, by the way, and how you can use some AI tools to optimize your supply chain resume, which you can watch by clicking over here. Keep watching.